The, the people at the top of the government are not given to self-reflection or to self-criticism. Uh, no, if you criticize the United States government, you're met with the exhortation, well, why don't you go somewhere else? <laughs> why, why, well, sometimes they say, why don't you go back to where you came from, you know, which might be Brooklyn. Well, this, this notion of uh, superiority and exceptionalism starts early. Well, here in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1630, the colony had just begun, and, and the governor, uh, Winthrop, uh, talked about uh, the Massachusetts Bay Colony uh, as uh, a city on a hill. I think Reagan embellished it a little and talked about a golden city on a hill. Well, the idea of a city on a hill, you've probably heard that expression a number of times, the idea of a city on a hill uh, is, a, is a nice one because it suggests a, a model. It suggests setting an example. I mean, that is a wonderful thing to be. But it doesn't stop there with just being a city on a hill. After uh, Governor Winthrop utters these words, about being a city on a hill. Just a few years later, the people in the city on a hill move out to massacre the Peacock Indians. between what the government does and what God approves of. And that process of not being just a city on a hill, but of moving out, of expanding, that's a, a persistent fact of American history, going all the way back to those first settlers and coming down to the present day. not to become persuaded that you don't have any power, you know? And, I mean, this is one of the great obstacles to people acting, a sense of futility. Uh, they have it all. They're in charge, you know? Uh, what can we do? Who are we? What do we have? And it's important to understand uh, that's where history comes in handy, too, because you find that these 
concentrations of power at certain points, they fall apart. Very suddenly, surprisingly, and you find that they're ultimately they're very fragile. And you find that governments that have said, oh, we will never do this, end up doing it. We will never cut and run. They said this in Vietnam. We cut and ran in Vietnam. Uh, in the South, well, you know, George Wallace, the racist governor of Alabama, said, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. Enormous applause. Two years later, blacks in Alabama had in the meantime begun to vote, and Wallace was going around trying to get black people to vote for him, you say. The reason these very apparently invincible constellations of power at the top fall is that ultimately they depend on the obedience of everybody in the population. When people withdraw their obedience, they have no power. You know? So, yeah, they depend on our obedience. When we withdraw it, their power disappears. Important to know that. Important to know that every little thing we do helps. We, can't, we don't all have to do heroic things. All we have to do is little things. And at certain points in history, millions of little things come together and change takes place.